Alrighty, guys, so uh, CP had me cut this tree down. When was that? Like almost way back in the spring, right? It was after we cut east of town. Was it? Yeah. Just in the summer? Yeah, because I was eyeing up trees. Okay, so just in the summertime. And we found this one. And today... We came up with this plan while talking to a buddy of ours to kind of make a box. And I said, I'll just make a plywood base for it. And he said, frame it in and fill it with some rock and put some fake peat moss or whatever in there to make it more a little bit more realistic. And CP decided she wanted a triangular shaped box, so that's what she got. And why is it in the house, right? Well, uh, she's going to mount her heads on it. Her Euro mounts. We've got one, two, three, four. How many are in here? Just the four, five? Yeah. Four or five Euro mounts. <laughs> CP did a... A wood stain on it and uh, that's how the wood turned out we just peeled the bark off and this is what was underneath all these little lines and shit like that make it kind of rusticy so to speak and yeah there it is anywho should look good when we're done talk to y'all later well good morning everybody how y'all doing today uh, it's not overly cold today. Well, it's cold, but not, it ain't no friggin' plus 15 or plus 20 out. It's only like plus five. A little bit of rain, getting the odd snowflake. Uh, yeah, she's just kind of wet. What are we doing? Well, we're building a gate, custom gate, right here for BCP Farm and Truckin's Ranch. Uh, 17 foot 10 is our dimension so she's a big one she's a big one um so yeah we got how i make them my top rail and bottom rail it doesn't matter how you set this gate that could be the top or this could be the top that one those two is uh right now 17 6 because i got to add on for my hinge the way i do it and allow clearance but anyway that's 17 foot six. Then I set my four foot. In this case, it's not even four foot because this is inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter uh, square tubing. And actually, this is coil pipe. So when they pull it off the coil and the guy squashes it down, he squashes it into a square, but it's not perfectly straight. If you look, you can see a bow. This one has a bow going the other way. This one has a bow like this. You see that? So I got to pull them a little bit, tweak them a little bit to get those straight. But anyway, so, and then this bar fits inside of my top and bottom, same on the other end. And then my other three bars are inside of that, obviously. And then we just cut these pieces to fit in here. And this is where these go. But because, see that? Well, Brandon, you cut it too short. Well, no, I didn't. It's because it's bowed. So we got to pull them, right? But anywho. So yeah, that's what we're working on right now. And in a little bit here, we'll be going out to check on some cows at home. And check on cows on the rented land. Because uh, they need to come home right away. Anywho, I got to cut some more steel here. So I'll bring you guys back once I got things tacked up. And we'll talk to you later. Doing? Woo! Anyway, what's going on? Well, I said I was going to bring you back when I had it all tacked together, but I lied. It's done. It's welded. Uh, here's my hinges. So here I put a three and a half inch piece. And then what this is, if you look, you see it half, half circle. Well, what that is called, actually, it's right here. Ah! 
from the old dairy barns. Not too many guys run this stuff anymore, but it's old, they call it staunchin bar. And so that's what I use for my hinges. We cut a three and a half inch piece here, then a four inch piece of staunchin and here, and they're set at the same point on either side so that uh, you can mount this gate any direction you want. There is no top, there is no bottom. Uh, it's exactly the same all the way. So, and they're all in. The divider bars, usually I only go with a divider bar in the middle, but because this sucker is over 17 feet long, I decided to put two sets of divider bars on her at 70 inches. Now, what's our overall length? I don't know. It should be pretty close to 17 foot 10 for the hole. I need a little bit of clearance so the gates will swing all the way um, against the edge of the corral, the way we're set up for it. But let's find out here. This first time I measured it. There we go. That gives me an inch and a half of clearance for the gate to swing tight to the edge of the crow. And it should swing both directions. And so, there. All we got to do now is uh, load her up on the tractor and haul it to the over to the barn and get it mounted. This got darn tape measure. Come on. Woohoo. In you go. Slowly but surely. There. It's in there. That's what she said. There. It's in there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to throw a chain on the son of a bitch on that side, I think. I got to find my box of chain. I don't know where it is. I used to have a big container full of chain around here somewhere. And I'll bring you guys back when we go to mount it. Talk to you then. Alrighty guys, well we got the gate done and we got it over here. I already had hinges made. I'll turn you around. Here we are. This is how I make my hinges. The threaded rod that goes through the post, another piece that comes up, and then you just set your gate on top of that. Top and bottom. Now, if you really want to get elaborate, you could put one the opposite direction. That way they can't lift it off, but I've never had that problem. Now, if you look, top of the gate right there, that's so I could hook a cable to her, because it's a heavy fucking gate, eh? So I can put a cable on it and run that cable to the top of the post up here run a cable up to the top and that'll just give that end of that gate some support now she doesn't quite swing all the way tight against the corral the way I was hoping because it's hitting when it's swung at this point it's hitting here and I can't push it out because my hinge is just a little too short if I could push it out another two inches top and bottom then I'd be able to swing it all the way tight against that corral. But that's okay. Most of the time, 90%, 99% of the time, when I'm working in the corrals, the gates will swing this other direction. And this way, he'll go quite a ways. So that's pretty good. Like that there. So yeah, that little cable, even though that post is only like two feet above the top of the gate, it'll still add a little bit of support. Anywho, that gate's done outside of, I need friggin' snap. I need a locking snap for the end of my chain. But I'm sure I've got some kicking around the barn here that I'm not using. So he's hung, he's good to go. Let's get on to something different. 
You go, girl. It it's running. Don't film me. <laughs> it's running. You gotta work it in there, right? I <laughs> get in the look. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I just came in to have some lunch. CP's been fighting with this stuff here today. Well, she actually just started. What it's gonna. What it's going to be like once she uh, gets it all done. I have no idea, but she's trying to put the grout into the into the seams where all the little seams are. Um, I think half of what she's doing is going on the floor, but good thing we got two bags enough to do twice the job. <laughs> okay. Time for me to leave. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Well, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing today? Yeah, this is another gate. It's not the same gate. It's another gate. This one is uh, 15 foot six. So I only got one set of divider bars in the middle versus two sets like on uh, the gate from yesterday. Uh, just gotta flip it over, weld up the other side. Oh look, I missed the weld. I have to bring the welder back for that one. Anyways, she's another cold one today. Well, cool. It's like zero. And the wind is howling like crazy here. But, uh, yeah, we're playing with gates. We'll get this one done and hung. And then we've got the two gates that are replacing this, I want to try and straighten them a little bit and mount them in different areas. So, that's Peter Patter and keep going. We'll talk to you guys later. Oh, and if anybody's wondering, this is inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. I guarantee you, uh, your cows, if they, if they break this gate, then you don't need that cow. I've had lots of one by one square tubing gates and those ones, the cows will rub on them and bow them, they'll bend them. But this stuff, I haven't had a cow bend this stuff yet. It's a little, it's anywhere from one eighth to three sixteenths, it varies. It's a little heavier than one eighth thick material. Um, and yeah, she's chunky. These are chunky friggin' gates when you build them, that's for sure. You better have a damn good post when you hang these suckers. Okay, I'll get this welded up and uh, we'll bring you back later. Hello, mocha dogs. Hello, mocha dogs. Good mocha dogs. Good mocha dogs. Okay, guys. So here we are. Got this other gate mounted and yeah, you can see... Well, fuck, that thing is leaning pretty goddamn hardcore, right? But with the threaded rod running through the post, I got to suck the top one in, and I can push the bottom one out, and that'll bring that end of the gate way up so that it's level. And I would like to have it the same level as this other gate, but I can't because the hinge runs through the post there. And I didn't want to go lower, so... We put it a little bit higher, like four inches, five inches higher, so that we're not crossing past with the other hinge, right? Anyways, let's get that sucker mounted in solid. And uh, yeah, if anybody has questions about these gates, by all means, uh, message me. Leave a comment in the comment section. Well, that's what they look like right there. Back you up a little bit. So that's a double gate off of one post right there. Sweet! Talk to you guys. Okay, so somebody might say something. Well, why the hell are your gates so high off the ground? Well, in the wintertime, when the snow builds up, the last thing you want to be doing is fighting with a gate that's caught in a fucking snowbank. Mm, so... And generally speaking, large animals, they're not going to crawl underneath that gate. Uh, young calves, yes, they will. But 
once they're a good eight, ten months old, I don't think they'll try crawling under. Um, if it's a problem, we'll change our hinges, drop the sucker down a little lower. But I like my gates, the bottom part of the gate, a good 12 to 13 inches off the ground. And what am I here? Right in the middle? Well, I'm 11 on my boot, 10 and a half to be exact. And there's another five inches above that. So I'm about, I'm about 16 inches. And this is dished out a little bit just from going in and out. I can dump some dirt in there and fill that in too. So, but anywho, there they are, both gates, side by side. And that ought to do the trick for us. That'll keep our cows in anyways. Okay, let's get on to some more gates. We'll talk to you later. Alrighty guys, sorry about the wind. But anyways, so this gate is uh, the one, it's a gate from what we just replaced with those two that I just built. And you can see where it's bent really bad. So we're gonna try straightening it out some. And I use him to straighten these gates out. There's one inside here. It was bowed so bad that it popped all the, where the mesh is welded on. It popped the fucking mesh out. It's not 100% straight, but it's a lot better than it was. Now we're gonna straighten this one out some, and then we'll weld the mesh back on that some bitch. Uh, so, freaking wind, some bitch. Anyway, bring you the. I'll show you how I do this. Oh. And so basically you can see that panel out there or that gate so I find my I got the one end up on a block obviously you guys saw that I think earlier and then you just uh, find a bend point and push down with the loader And generally I have to push down a couple, two, three different points. See how that did. She still bowed a little bit. But not as bad as it was, that's for sure. I'll hit it a couple more times here. And we should be good to go. My ground isn't perfectly level either, so uh, that's going to play a factor also on how good or how how good it bends back into form or not. But I think we got her now. Oh yeah, it's much better. I'm gonna go out there and I'll throw it on the loader and then I'll bring you guys back. There, before I throw it on the loader, remember how to add that big hump in it right here? Oh, well, we pretty much took it out. It doesn't look too bad now. Let's see what it looks like standing up. Still a little bowed, but not too bad. I can live with that the way it is. That one, the mesh is still on it. So this one, 
we got to do some welding and fix her up. Okay, we'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty, guys. Well, for all you newcomers, I'm standing in our fence line feed alley, okay? We got three crowls on this alley. I can easily put basically, I would say 50 to 60 calves or like 30 cows in each of these crowls. Um, but this is it right here. And one of our, one of my pet peeves about this feed alley was I never ever had a gate because this is 24 feet wide and I've never had a gate going across midway. Our two main corrals in this feed alley, we call it corral one and corral two. And then corral three down there, uh, it's not set up as a fence line feed. All I have to do is take the one bottom rail off over there. If you can see that. So, there's water in all of them. The overhead shelter is shit. I'm not going to deny it. It needs to be tore down and taken out completely. But if I pull that rail off, that bottom rail, and readjust the middle of those three rails, this could work as a feed alley out here also. <laughs> but on the end over here, I generally put one of these 24 foot crowd panels right across the end and we just kind of tie it on. But for when we're bringing cattle out of a corral, lots of times the little buggers will want to double back and come this way. Or when you're bringing them in, they run right past the friggin' gate. And if it's me by myself or me and CP, sometimes if you got a psycho bitch cow, she'll run right past you, right? Well, the gate that was there is now hanging here. And I got a long rope on it. So this will aid us, right? Coming off this big power pole. And my plan was to put a light on that power pole and have an overhead power wire running to a water bowl in the next crawl over, but that never ever happened. But anyways, so with crawl one, that gate will open and you could tie the two of them together. That works really sweet. Crawl two, on the other hand, it won't quite reach. And that gate hangs off of there. So it's either gonna swing against you or it's gonna be in the way, right? But I have a crawl panel right there. That crawl panel and this gate make it to the post. So this way I can work with cattle out here on my own without too much grief. <laughs> I can actually use this gate to aid as a sorting gate as time goes on. So yeah, we got a gate there. Now, Crowl 2, the gate that was in Crowl 2, because Crowl 3 never had a gate, it had two Crowl panels that acted as a gate. So. I took the gate that was mangled up from over there after we straightened it and fixed the welds on the mesh and I mounted it right here. Hey, why not, right? So yeah, that gate is now in there and it'll swing either direction, in or out, so on and so forth. So, got her cased. This is all looked after now, sweet. Anyways, not sure if I'm going to bring you guys back again. I got to go check on some cattle at the rented land. Um, they're coming home this week from unless something happens and we decide to leave them there another week. But uh, we got to go check on those animals over there. So... If I don't bring you guys along for that ride to check on them, give us the old thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. 
Stay out of the wind, guys. She's nasty one here today. Fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll catch you all later. Alrighty, guys. Well, I did bring you back. We're back in the truck because it's freaking cold, that wind. It's plus six Celsius. So what that works out to Fahrenheit, I don't really know. But uh, with this gale force winds we're getting, it's cold. Mm, so well, I'll give you a look at some of the cows and calves. You'll get a better look at them probably tomorrow because we're going to be in here tomorrow. We got to fix up the corrals so that we can load them, which is all back in this area over here. Mm, so, anywho, I'll let you go. We'll yammer at you all later.